Welcome to the Women in Leadership Body, Mind, Soul, and Business podcast. I'm Charlie. And I'm Heather. And together we're working to connect women in leadership, body, mind, soul, and business. Deep breath. Building relationships and improving the health and wellness of our community, body, mind, and soul. And sharing the heart and soul of who we are and what we do. I'm so proud of you. <laughs> I'm trying. She was trying without her notes today. I'm so proud. Okay. That's, That's a, lot. a lot to get out. <laughs> it is a lot to get out. It's a lot to remember. And we're working on our memory skills. So yeah. um, today's guest is an amazing woman of leadership in the community and great networker and friend. Please welcome to the table, the incredible Kim Thompson. Kim, can you take a couple of minutes and tell us a little bit about yourself, who you are, what you do? Okay, so my name is Kim Thompson and I'm with Prime Lending and I am a home loan expert. So I help folks who are looking to either buy a home, build a home, renovate a home, take cash out of their home, um, so, and it's, it's kind of funny, um, as a little girl, if you would have asked me what I wanted to be when I grew up, I never would have said, I'm going to help people buy homes. Mm -hmm. um, my mom was a single mom with five kids. And after the divorce, we moved into low income subsidized um, apartments. Mm -hmm. And um, it just wasn't something that was ever even on my radar. And um, I was married in my early 20s. And my husband and I were living in upstate New York and we were renting a little house and the owner decided that he wanted to sell. And he thought maybe we could buy the house. We didn't know the first thing about buying a house. Right. <laughs> and so we went and talked to a lender and we found out we couldn't buy that house, but we went away with a plan. And within 10 months, we did buy our first house. And yeah, so it was... And then, then it's kind of like, well, it wasn't even really a goal, but now we did it. <laughs> right. It was that, something that, that, so you didn't even know that it was an option available to you when your landlord is like, hey, do you want to buy it? And you're like, is, is that a thing? <laughs> like, can yeah, I do that? I was like, I was like, I had grown up in an apartment, right? I was two when my mom got divorced and, you know, she was pregnant with my younger sister. And so, I mean, I didn't know the first thing about owning a home, right? Mm -hmm. And newly married, I mean, you know, I wasn't even, I was 21, mm -hmm. you know, so I was married super young, you know, grew up in a Navy town, married a Navy guy. <laughs> we, um, so we were renting the house and when the guy thought, you know, hey, maybe you could buy it. We surely were like, how, how would we do that? Right. Mm -hmm. And so we went and we talked to somebody and guess what? It doesn't talk. It doesn't cost you anything to talk to somebody. I was <laughs> like, Oh, okay. We can go talk to them. Mm -hmm. We found out, you know, it was kind of sad because we were like, Oh, well, I guess we can't buy that house, but we, you know, we figured out a way we left there with a plan of what we needed to do. And oftentimes I tell people that's it. You know, if you don't know what to do, go talk to somebody. And start figuring out the steps because mm -hmm. then before you know it, you're doing something you didn't think you could do. And so that was back in 1988. Now, I wow. didn't start doing mortgages until 2005. So a friend of mine, um, I had worked for the federal government. So every mm -hmm. time my husband got orders, we would just transfer, you know, right. so he would, mm -hmm. yeah, we went from California to New York, from New York to Washington. Mm -hmm. We were over on the peninsula. He got out, we moved to this side. I transferred to Naval Station Everett. So mm -hmm. I did that until I had my second child. And then I decided to be home. And I was home from 99 until 2005. So when my both boys were in school full-time, I thought, now what, right? Now mm -hmm. what? <laughs> so a friend of mine who was in real estate, she says, you should come do real estate with me. And I thought, if I went looking at houses, I'd either want to change mine or I'd want to move. And we'd already done enough of that moving thing with the military. Right. So she said, no, you should do the loans. And I said, I said, well, I, I mean, I could probably do it. I mean, like I pushed paper for the federal government. I've already bought one house, bought my second house, bought my third house. I'm like, okay, I think I could do the loan stuff. Right. Mm -hmm. And so she introduced me to a broker and I went and met with him 
And the next thing I knew, I was studying and taking my test to be licensed. And I was going to, and I started to do mortgages. Again, wasn't something on my radar, <laughs> wasn't a goal that I had in mind, didn't dream about being that when I was a little girl. And um, now it's, you know, 17 years later, <laughs> wow. I'm still, you know, I'm doing mortgages. I feel but, like 2005 was like yeah. last year. <laughs> yeah. No, no, what? <laughs> That's yeah. like, wow. well, I know I had to do the math. <laughs> I, I had to do the math the other day to go, really? Oh, wow. 17 years? Like, how is that? Possible? So way back when. Mm -hmm. a seed of passion was planted. Well, and you know, and this is the funniest thing that I remember. Like I thought, Ooh, this is kind of exciting. Ooh, but it's kind of scary. And I'm like, Ooh, can I do this? And she held the belief that I could do it. Right. Yeah. And so I borrowed her belief for a little while. I, I love got that. To... It feels yeah. really yeah. powerful that you um, help people buy homes that maybe never thought they could yes like well, coming from your own past like I, I know I've grown up um you know in and out of apartments and you know yes owning isn't hasn't been on my radar either like mm -hmm. I don't know what that would look like you know like yeah well and it's um you know it's it's interesting because um I never I mean I just got to help my uh, older son in December of 2020 by his first home. Mm. And so, you know, it just, it just changed things. You know, once we bought a home and then we were able to sell that one and buy our next home and sell that one. And then we bought the home um, in Marysville. We sold that one. We bought the home that we're in. And um, this home allowed me to move my mother up from California and to care for her until she passed. And so, um, you know, it, it's, it's just crazy to look at it, how it changes the landscape of your life having, yeah. and, you know, and it's funny it's because I, if you look behind me, yeah. I've got a, if you look behind me, I've got a whole bunch of cards and a lot of those are from customers that are saying, thank you. Right. And it helps to keep my why in front of me to mm -hmm. why, why do I do it? So when I'm usually working, I'm facing my screen and I see that. And it just reminds me sometimes when things are tough <laughs> that why I do it, you know, mm -hmm. and uh, cause you make a difference in somebody else's life. Right. Yeah. I think it's a, it's amazing because your story has come full circle, you know, from living low income with your mom, going through the divorce and things when you were little, and now you were able to provide her a beautiful, safe home in her, you know, toward the end of yeah. her life, you know, that yeah. full circle. And then and now then, oh, you're even more full circle as you've healed that generation mm -hmm. of repeating that cycle by learning about this at a young age. Now that you're your mom, you've helped your son. So there he's not gonna be without a home, you know, like how cool yeah. is that? Okay. Like, that is very has cool. full body goosebumps. Like oh well, and, <laughs> and I and I tell my kids, you know, it was one of the things, you know, I grew up in the Bay Area. And, you know, um, literally she was, um, she had four children mm -hmm. and I was born when she was 38. So my mom was breaking molds. I mean, like in 19, she was born in 28 and in 1950, she went into the air force and she served from 50 to 54. I have this really great picture of her in her white dress uniform. And there was a bunch of men by her. And I joked about her having the pick of the litter because she was the only woman in that group. Mm -hmm. And um, when she got out, she outranked my father mm -hmm. and then she went to college and she went to college in Sol Ross University in Texas. And during college, she had my two older sisters. So like she, she had to take one semester off to have my one sister who was born in April, her birthday this week. And, and um, she took that semester off and then came back and finished and got her degree. So in 1959, she had her degree and she was a mom with children. And then they moved, they moved to California to take teaching jobs and she was a working mom. So I say my mom was breaking the mold, right? Uh, just breaking it wide open for all of us girls that were gonna come behind her that would go in the military, that would go to college, that would be a working mom because she was doing that. And then also, you know, she was in, um, so, uh, 
one thing that's near and dear to my heart, and you guys see what I do in the community, and um, I like to support Seroptimist Best for Women. Um, I like to do stuff for Eagle Wings for adults with disabilities. I like to do stuff for domestic violence services. So my mom came out of a very abusive relationship, and she was pregnant with my younger sister at 40 and had four children. And so, but she was 3,000 miles away from any help, right? Her family was on the East Coast. And she did it. And I'm thinking, I don't know how there wasn't times that we weren't homeless. I mean, seriously, mm -hmm. because it was very, very, very difficult. Yeah. Kim, you and I have more in common than you think. <laughs> <laughs> well, that would be a conversation for another day, Charlie. Huh? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Your whole story <laughs> is like a reflection of mine. Like, honestly, my dad was in the military. My parents got divorced when I was little. Um, the whole, the, like the whole thing. Mom working all the time. Mom working all the time. My mom, watching my mom go to college. You know, she graduated when I was in middle school. You know, all the things. Yeah, there's um, definitely a lot of connecting points there. And yeah, we'll have to have a chat because it, it really is an, almost a mirror image of uh, my life, which is actually really cool. So that's a lot more things that we have in common. It's, it's interesting how our moms did pave the way, mm -hmm. even, even my mom, uh, um, for who she is, um, <laughs> without giving anything away. Um, she had me when she was 17 and she did not finish high school. But when I was graduating from high school, she went back and got her GED at the same time. So that was really cool in our family nice. to, to see her step up and do that. Mm -hmm. And um, I've gone on and have an associate. And no wonder why we didn't think we were smart. <laughs> wow well, all the things right like well, and you know what and she didn't she didn't let her dropping out of school become the story that she said ever looked back on and said I wish I would have she went back and did it so right. kudos to her for sure exactly you know? I mean because there's a lot of things that could have held her back thinking I'm I'm not good enough or <laughs> people are going to judge me and for whatever whatever things that she could have been playing in her mind to kind of hold her back she, she, you know, she didn't overthink it and she just did it. So that's yeah. awesome. I will always be grateful to my mom for going back to school when us kids were old enough to remember. Right. My mom graduated high school when I was in, or not high school. My mom graduated college um, when I was in eighth grade. Um, <clears throat> and so that was, you know, we were there for the struggle. Like that's cool. The whole thing. My little sister, who's seven years younger than me, doesn't really remember how much we struggled mm -hmm. <laughs> when we were little, um, and how much our family struggled when we were younger. Um, so, but I will always be thankful like for that time because I learned so much. Right. Mm -hmm. You know. You do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. I love to tell um, yes. and my my child um, stories about him lofting his blocks or stuffed animals um, up onto the table because I would be studying with headphones in, you know, studying, and um, my sister would come and watch him so I could mm -hmm. study. And but he still wanted mom, of course, you know. Right. <laughs> and so mom was doing her best to just like I played this one album over and over again. That was my study album. So when that was on, that was my study music. <laughs> yeah, right, so that was that was your study album. Um, it was Evanescence. Mm. Oh yes. Oh my gosh. Love them. It's <laughs> <laughs> so okay. pretty. Yeah. So our sutra topic this week is Brahmacharya, which is conservation of vital energy. Oh, that's a good. Which I think goes really <laughs> well with what we're already talking about, right? Um, and then our quote this week: It is only when we understand the pursuit of sensation, which is one of the major activities of the mind, that pleasure, excitement, and violence cease to be dominant feature in our lives. Jiddu Krishman, Krishnamurti. Mm. So conservation of vital energy and why, why is that like important? Why is that 
Thing. Well, I, I was telling you just before we started, it was funny. I've always seen fear where people use the acronym as, you know, either uh, uh, false evidence appearing real or face everything and rise. But today I heard one that was feeling excited and ready because mm. the feeling that you get when you have fears may be anxious, but the feeling that you get is heightened when you're excited as well. So telling myself instead of I'm afraid, I'm afraid is I'm excited. I'm excited. And it changes my energy, right? To do something. When you're excited to do something, you're looking forward to it. When you're afraid of something and you're anxious, you're drawing back from it. Well, so, and your mind of, doesn't know, you know the difference, like, right? Your mind doesn't know the difference. We were talking yep. about that just a couple of weeks ago, how fear and excitement often feel the same. And sometimes it's hard for us to tell the difference. Yes, so, that's yeah. exactly. So yeah, that's how I thought. Now that's how I'm going to look at fear instead of looking at it, you know, face everything and rise or, you know, false evidence appearing real was, um, no, I'm just feeling excited and ready. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. Oh, um, sure. One of our other podcast guests talks about having the fear and doing it anyways. So that like yeah. the tool to do it anyways is like Anna Marie. yeah yeah she has a really good courses and she's yeah I I went to one of her courses recently about about having fear and just doing it anyways and having that awareness around it so that you can recognize it and be like I'm not gonna take you into flight or flight I'm gonna move you over here into excitement that's a great tool I like it right and you know we don't grow unless we go outside of our comfort zone right right so we got to get comfortable have to be a little uncomfortable yeah Yeah. to be a little little uncomfortable that's where the growth comes from for sure the internet can't work 100 percent perfect the technology is going to do a thing you know there's going to be something that's going to set you kind of off course how are we going to handle it right well, and there's that part of, oh, I'm going to, I'm going to do this and you're planning and you're going to get there. And sometimes it takes a long time versus, mm-hmm. you know, you have people that are going to plan to do it and have to have everything just right. And then you have the people that just jump in and they kind of figure it out as they're going, you know, mm-hmm. they figure it out. So like, I admire that the two of you said, we're going to start this podcast and we're going to do it. And you might not know, you might, you probably didn't know a whole lot about how we were going to go about doing it when you started it. So it was the trial and error piece. She's like, Sarah, it it was the trial and error piece. But, you know, we're always so afraid to fail, right? Yeah, right. And really, it's just- We just wanted somebody to hang out on Fridays. (laughs) (laughs) Well, and they bounce off each other. You get that good energy bouncing off each other, right? Yeah. One of you is down, the other one brings you up. Mm -hmm. And so there's that collaboration. And I think that's kind of one of the biggest thing that I see right now. So um, I come from an abundance mindset. There's room for everybody. Yes. Right. There's an enough pie. We don't have to, you know, it's not, I got to get there all. There's not that scarcity. It's that we talk about mindset. growing there's a longer people. table to, fo- to hold yes. more people. Like everybody's welcome people. at this table. Like, yes. And being <laughs> inclusive. Yes. Mm-hmm. So um, I think that's kind of, you know, that, um, that whole mindset of, of growth and not, it, um, somebody else was saying fail is just your first attempt in learning. Yes. You know? And so, but we're so afraid to fail. Mm-hmm. We're so afraid to fail, but yet we have to try to do stuff to learn how to do it. And so, it's you know, interesting it, it's how kind of like, we get stuck in that judgment of having to be perfect when it's yep. part of the process. It's mm-hmm. part of the journey is learning and not being perfect. And, you know, you don't come out like walking, running, talking, good to go, you know? Yeah. <laughs> There's the growth along the way. There's growing pains. Anytime that we're hitting a point where we're moving to the next level, we always feel resistance. Always. 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 Well, and it's, it's a neat thing that we're doing in our, the John Maxwell study that I was talking about, and it's talking about the lid in leadership. And, you uh-huh. know, um, my, I was saying how my mom was breaking through those barriers as mm-hmm. she was coming up, making room for us women to yeah. come up and come through this without having those barriers. So sometimes we have to take the lid off of our own box and 
get out there and try to do something different than what we're used to doing. And so it's, um, that's kind of why I'm taking this, this leadership one that I'm doing is to figure out, you know, getting the, moving this lid, removing, mm -hmm. removing the barriers for myself. Mm -hmm. So. Absolutely. And I like that idea when we talk about the vital energy and like, you can remove the lid, but still be you. Like, mm -hmm. like that doesn't mean that you're not going to still be you. Like if, if you open your mind to something new, you're still you. Like that doesn't change the core of like, because mm -hmm. sometimes maybe sometimes it's scary for people to take that lid off. And sometimes it's scary for people to really, truly feel comfortable being themselves. Right true so mm -hmm. you know um, well and I think if we if we stop growing we get stagnant mm -hmm. and stagnant ponds get stinky and Ooh. so yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean like we, yeah I, I mean I think that we just we wither right you know yeah. we just get icky and, and wither and stinky and just so um you know the growth part of, of doing that. And then, and giving yourself that permission that it doesn't have to be perfect. I'm not right. going to go in a straight line. It's going to be a little bit all over the place. Right. And, um, but it's my journey, mm -hmm. right. I, I didn't start out, you know, with doing mortgages, it was not a straight line. No. <laughs> you know, it was to figure it out. And, you know, it was, yeah. So um, giving myself that, you know, that learning, it was a pretty steep learning curve, but giving myself that time to learn. And, um, and I, all I know is that it's always changing. Life always. is always changing. Mm -hmm. So we're always going to be learning. And so as long as you have that desire to keep growing, you know, you'll keep living. Yeah, absolutely. And you'll keep having the vitality. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Wow. <laughs> so, wow. so as entrepreneurs, um, we uh, lead the way um, in giving in our community. So it's important that we um, bring that up. And you are very giving in our community and you are, um, that's kind of how we met you, you know, like, you know, reconnected with you um, was at events and you're out there and you're, you work with people and you love the Sir Optimist. Um, but our dogs of podcast this quarter have requested um, that they be represented. Um, so our okay. cause of the quarter is called the boogie bin. Boogie bin. So they um, they collect um, gently used um, or new um, items that you might have like around your house um, for different pets, and they donate them to um, smaller um, local nonprofits that are in need that may not normally get the donations. Yeah, so, and we have several. Oh. So, so what do you call it? You call it your of the quarter your our cause of the quarter so cause of the quarter oh that's great because we're um uh we're doing a swap for a cause that's why i was like oh <laughs> yeah. Yeah. so every three months we change what our cause of the quarter is so this quarter it's the boogie bin with the dogs of podcast all their information are will be in the comments or in the description below or and of course you can always go to our website and yeah um, and, and check that out too at www.womeninleadershipbsmb.com and um also there while you're there you can check out the events page see who's coming up on the podcast see nice. where you might be able to find us local and live and also to see where you might find us virtual and also if you guys are looking for something to do in the community, check the calendar because we are adding things to there all the time. And if you know of an event that uh, should be added to the calendar, go ahead and reach us, Heather. Reach Heather. <laughs> um, can, I, yeah. can I give a little plug? Can I give sure, a little absolutely. plug for something absolutely. that I have coming up? Okay. What do you got? So, um, so Eagle Wings Disabilities Ministries is a 501c3 in Marysville. Uh -huh. And um, we have a swap for a cause that is coming up on May 17th and it will be um, that's, at today. that's today that's <laughs> today oh because this is the this day pre recording yeah, that will the be day. the day this is perfect <laughs> so oh tonight you can come and meet Kim yes, yes. at yep. 5 30 so 
at the Bethlehem Lutheran Church. Okay. And so what the swap for a cause is, is we collect gently used or new items, uh, accessories. So hats, sunglasses, scarves, mm -hmm. jewelry, belts, shoes. Um, we even have the Chic Boutique, which is clothing that mm -hmm. people have that that maybe you know they wore it they thought they liked it they don't love it anymore someone else can get you know still use out of it and so it's $25 to come you have dinner you have the opportunity to buy wine there'll be some silent auction items and then there'll be the swap so uh, we ask folks who are coming um, before the 10th of May to donate items um, that they have for the swap and those can be dropped off at Eagle Wings Disabilities Ministries in Marysville on Grove. So oh, or you can that is so awesome. That is really cool. I love yeah. networking. It's, it's <laughs> our, I think it's our seventh one that we've done. So it's grown. We didn't have the Chic Boutique and we started out really small. And now I think it's about 125 people have come. And um, That's there's no cap fighting there's <laughs> yeah everybody thought how is that going to work like there's all this stuff and people are going to be taking it from each other and like no 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 it's very organized and so it's um, not those yeah. like um bridal um store yeah. um things where like david's bridals like on sale everything's like 75 percent off and all the brides <laughs> like run in and grab all the wedding dresses oh they have that at the tacoma dome don't they yeah, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Kind of thing. She's no, like, I don't. Um, but then they're we'll, fighting over the wedding dresses. We'll add that to know. the calendar for sure. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, sure. We'll make sure we let Absolutely. people know in advance mm -hmm. um, too. So um, when they hear the show, they'll be reminded to to yeah. come on down and yeah. meet you. Yeah, absolutely. Nice. Um, yeah, so that's where you check out all of the info is on the website. We're so excited to have all of you guys. And thank you, Kim, so much for joining us today. We truly appreciate you. And you are truly a gift to the community. Well, thank you. I, I Thank you for reaching out and asking me. This was a great opportunity. It was fun. You two, you know, you guys have a lot of energy and it's, it's infectious. So um, yeah. You bring the fun. Yay. <laughs> and to our listeners, we love and appreciate you too. Thank you for tuning in. We'll see you next time. Namaste. Namaste.